Um, sexual assault, I guess, would be just any unwanted phys sexual or physical contact. That could be touching or actual sexual contact, whether contact, whether that be, you know, um, actual sex or just oral sex or anything, and just anything unwanted. It's different from rape, I guess, because it doesn't have to be sex. The type of person that commits sexual assault really can't be defined. It's hard to judge who would because it's something that they don't openly talk about, so it's kind of hidden. Anyone, but I, I would say mostly horny people. Usually it is more of an aggressive type. A psycho, probably. Someone that just has some kind of fetish. I think anyone could, honestly. I do worry about being sexually assaulted, especially on a college campus where the statistics show that one in four college women are raped. Sexual assault is so common because you, you have teenagers or young adults coming from structured environments. You know, their parents have structured them from birth. Campuses are just like this big place. Just at, at this age, you're just so, you're so innocent and it's so easy for somebody to take that from you. I think alcohol makes sexual assault more common on campuses. It's kind of hard to find your place and so a lot of times going to alcohol or something like that kind of helps alleviate all that stress and that's when you end up in situations like that. It lowers people's ability to judge what they're doing. consent if it's there you know it um I guess I, it's something I really haven't thought about I think that's why sexual assault happens more often is because people don't ask and they go ahead and do something and the other person is afraid to say no and so they go along with it because they don't want to be the one to say no. Having sex, it's a, it's a very emotional experience, you know, sometimes. And if, in, if while, they're having, while someone's having sex, they feel like they need to stop, then I think it's definitely their choice to do that, and they definitely have that right. How you relieve peer pressure, which is another big problem, I don't know how you handle that. I truly don't. I, I don't know how I did it in high school. It wasn't there when I went through college the first time. Peer pressure and peer lack of support is probably the, the biggest problem. What are my friends or my peers going to think if this gets out? I think that anyone could mistake a go-ahead for a not go-ahead. <laughs> In a sexual assault case, it's never your fault. Well, if if you know who ever, I guess, raped you or sexually assaulted you, I think you need to report them. Telling someone about it 
is going to be a better action than if you just, you know, stay quiet about it or let your friends stay quiet about it. So the first thing I always say is you have to be proactive as an individual. Um, either if you are the subject of an assault, you have to be proactive. Um, if you are tempted to commit an assault, then I think we have to do something to, to change the thought process that goes on there that, makes, that allows people to think it's okay to do that. Do you know anyone who's been sexually assaulted? Yeah, I was. In college, first time around, and, and it wouldn't have been defined that way back then. Boy, you know, and I've not ever, ever talked about it. So it was, um, huh. I would probably say that, um, if you're gonna, if, if it happens, you, you do need to, you just, you need to stand up. You need to stand up anyway. <laughs>